Welcome back, everyone, to the Fenton Perspective here on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. I am your host, Lorian Fenton, and it is happy Fourth of July to you all. I just wish we were all leaders in the next revolution that's going to happen. Um, I don't know what you guys think. It's going to happen on one side or the other, but anyhow, I'm not going to get into all that right now because, as you saw earlier in the show, it just upsets me to the point that I can't talk. So um, I'm not like Alex Jones. I can't just go on and on about not giving you guys um, answers, you know, and the problem we've got is, and I, you know, I am going to talk about this for one second. I hope my guest doesn't get angry with me, but there is this whole issue of I'm trying to get people to understand that the Occupy movement is the way to go, but the Occupy movement had no clear leadership defined. It also had no clear mission defined. It was not army tactics as usual. It was a bunch of people getting together and making a stand. And I get that. And it, it was like a, a giant group of protesters all over the United States, which is wonderful. But if we took that and we took the whole thing and did it over again, but this time everybody had a mission in mind a destination in mind, um, and an outcome in mind, then who knows what could have happened during that. That was a huge test. And I think it was, to be honest with you all, I think that was a staged event by our government because how else could you be that organized? And like I say on all my shows, you guys, evil is more organized than you can ever imagine. And so it just bothers me. Something in my gut tells me that that event, it, for it to do what it did, for it to go nationwide, for it to be that organized, thank God for the Internet, that's all I can say, is um, somebody had to let it happen, okay? So catch my drift or not, but there's something definitely going on with that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, I think, with our next guest. But before we do, I've got to say, we are listener-supported radio here at Revolution Radio, and I do hope that you guys are at freedomslips.com. It is 4th of July, so maybe you guys can um, help us out a little bit here. Let me go to the website. As usual, I am bad host, and we need to spank me, but, you know, then again, who knows? I might like it. So, um, <laughs> as a good friend says, you never know what you might like until you try it. Okay, so on the support us page, oh, before I do that, i got to see how much money we've raised this month. Okay. Oh, my God, we're doing pretty good so far. We're on the 4th of July, and we need to raise every month twenty six fifty. And we have raised 625 So, you know, we're not a third way there yet, but we're getting close. It's a fourth of the way at least. And I'm really happy about that, you guys. But it doesn't make the whole nut, as they say. And I really need you all to go to freedomslips.com. Go to the Support Us page. And on the Support Us page, there are many ways to help us out. The first way is to become a member of the monthly support club. There's different levels from $10 to $100. You could also buy the heirloom seed packs, which I think everybody should have. I God, someday I really hope to be able to afford the community garden. I just want to grow enough food for, you know, half of the neighborhood at least. You can make a one-time donation. You can put a personal chat room icon up for 5 bucks. But my most favorite is the archives. You have to go to a separate button for that, the archive button. And on the archive button you will find that you can sign up at the bottom of the page and become a member of the archives for five dollars a month i believe it's 4.95 a month and that is the best way to support us here if everybody listening to my voice as i say every week would become a member of the archives pretty soon we wouldn't need to even be asking for any money so i do hope that all of you help us out become a member of the archives listen to my show or anybody else's show here at revolution radio anytime you want by being a member of the archives and we appreciate it so thank you all who have donated I do appreciate you keeping me here and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart happy 4th of July if you're doing it for all the right reasons and celebrating the freedom that we did have in this country then good for you if you can uh, think of other ways to help get our freedom back that's even better for you so thank you all for donating I appreciate it and we're gonna move on here in a minute so um, I do want to say one other thing I forgot to tell you guys about this at the top of the show I actually met uh, well I'm gonna take a couple more minutes my guest today is DJ from level 9 news 
news.com level nine news.com i want you guys all to go there first the nine is a number nine and numeric nine so it's level nine news.com and we'll get with dj here in just a moment but i want to let you guys all know something really nice happened to me um, at contact in the desert this year i was in a very funky state um, i i wasn't having a great time and I was hot, I was miserable, I wasn't feeling well. My diabetes has been kind of flaring up lately. And so um, I was trying not to eat, but it was so hot, I was trying, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. You guys, I'm telling you, I'm going to go on a little side tangent here. Contact in the desert is not one of my favorite places to be. It is truly too hot to be in the desert uh, doing that kind of stuff. And I just don't know about the future of me ever being at it again, but who knows? We'll see. Um, anyhow, I'm at contact in the desert. I'm having a really funky day, and my good friend Mary, uh, Mary Electra, she is a, a famous sound healer, and a, she's an amazing masseuse. She came up to me and said, um, I'll work on you. And I said, okay, great. So we found a place. She's working on me, and I broke down into tears. I was just a mess. And she said to me, what's going on? I said, oh, there's just so many things going on, and I'm feeling so bad. And she said, look, let's just pray to your angel and ask her for help because you need it, right? I said, yeah, I do. And she goes, okay, let's do it. So we kind of prayed and did our thing, and it was really wonderful. And I felt really good afterwards because I hadn't had a, a week or – it's been a couple weeks at that point that I hadn't had time to really connect with my angels. And I try to connect with them every day, at least twice a day. And just for some weird reason, I was so busy the last two weeks before contact, I couldn't make the connection. So I really did a deep meditation with them, talked to them, and, and did, did a request. And you guys, I haven't done a request for a long time. I realized I never asked for anything. The only thing I asked for is for them to protect me, you know, and I thought that was enough. I never wanted to go beyond that because I figured if I'm protected, I'm, I'm, I'm loved by God, and, and that's all I needed, you know. But she convinced me, Mary was a very wise woman, she convinced me that they would help me with anything. So I did this, and I prayed, and um, I was sitting at the table right after the massage, and I was kind of wrung out from all the tears and and the, the asking and the praying, and I was sitting there, and this woman walks up, and she says hello to Melinda Leslie, who's sitting to my left, and tells me what a great uh, tour guide Melinda is, and we were laughing and about how she became a great tour guide with her night vision sky go goggles and all that stuff, and she looked at me, and she goes, um, Oh, I, I, and I said, I'm a radio talk show host, blah, blah. And she goes, oh, do you need any help? She goes, I've got plenty of time. I can help you. And I've been in radio for a long time. I'm a radio coach. I was like, what? Anyhow, so long story short, folks, prayer does work because this woman now we've met, she's doing a lot of revamping of my things. She's going to help me with the website. She's, she's an amazing woman, and if it wasn't for me praying to my God, my angels, you know, whatever is up there, I don't think I would have met her, to be honest with you. I think we would have, you know, there's a thousand people at this conference. I may not have met her. So she was truly an answer to my prayers, and I want to thank her if she's listening to my show today for meeting with me, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. But it was just nice knowing there was some support out there, and it's nice knowing that God's still listening to me. <laughs> I thought he might have just said, you know what, you're on your own now, kid. You, you know, you're causing enough trouble. <laughs> Anyhow, so I'm going to bring on my guests. I just thought I'd share that little story with you guys because everybody's always interested in what's going on with me. I'm like the Kardashian rear end butt. TV show here on the radio. <laughs> oh. Okay, DJ, are you with me? Hi, Laureen. Happy Fourth of July. Yeah, you too. Thank you for being on my show today. I really appreciate it. Hey, and by the way, I can hear myself a little bit in the background, so can I get you to turn down your speakers just a hair? Can you still hear me? Yeah, hang on one second. Sure, no problem. Anyhow, DJ, folks, you've got to know, she's the most amazing woman I've ever met, I swear to God. I heard her one day on John B. Wells' show talking about Jade Helm, and I was like, oh my God, this woman is fascinating. She does her research. And I've had her on the show a couple times, and, and you know, we talk every once in a while back and forth, and every once in a while she'll text me on, in Skype and say, I've got something really cool, and you know, we talk about it a little bit, and it's just, it's amazing the work she does. She is truly 
and a gifted and very thorough researcher and reporter. And I would say she is a journalist in the true sense of the word, folks, because very few people out there really are doing journalism anymore. It's I call it just giant sensationalism. And she doesn't do that. She really does her research before she throws things up on her website. You know, everybody else is just throwing stuff up to fill the space. She actually writes these articles, takes her time, understands what she's doing, and she knows what she's talking about. So I bring you DJ. It's level9news.com. That's L-E-V-E-L, the number nine, news.com. DJ, what are we going to talk about today? Your website is chock full of stuff. I want to start with transhumanism. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that, that's, uh, that's a pretty big subject. Um, I know, it's huge. But, you know, your website is just so amazing. And this first article that caught me today when I went to the website was Transhumanism, Our New Evolutionary Path. Mm-hmm. Now, did you write this article or is this one that you saw, thought was so amazing you had to put up there by somebody else? I can't tell yet. No, ma'am, I wrote that article. Oh, did you? Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, oh, my God. Okay. So, um, so, so what I need to know from you is why humans will be hybrid robots by 2030. It's very interesting that you're, you're leading with that on your website right now. Have you seen the movie The Corporation with Robin Wright Penn? I don't think so. Oh, my God. I've been telling everybody to watch it. It's not easy to sit through. It is a really bad movie. But but the whole concept and what they're talking about in the movie is very intriguing to me because it, it's basically taking our consciousness and putting it in an AI reality and we can become anything we want in the AI reality. And it starts out with, I'm just going to, I'm going to be a spoiler here for you folks because no one's going to sit through this thing. But basically what happens is the movie industry starts out by owning people's consciousness and putting them into characters that look like humans on in a movie. And so they don't need live actors anymore. As the guy describes in the, in the first part of the movie, he goes, I don't have to put up with your drug abuse. I have to put up with your womanizing. I have to put up with anything. I just put you up there and have you do what I want you to do. Um, um, anyhow, so there we go. And a uh, very interesting concept of a movie. And I'm not going to tell everybody how it ends, but you really need to watch it and make yourself sit through it because it really shows you what could happen eventually. I really believe so. And so humans will be hy- hybrid robots by 2030. Now, uh, is this, is this, now this looks like this is by Ray Kurzweil which I've heard quite a bit about. And do you go on after that to talk about what your take is on it? Yes. Uh, Ray Kurzweil is probably the world, um, the, the world renowned pusher of transhumanism. Yes. Yes, he is. Yeah. He has some very, very strange ideas in his head. (laughs) Well, I'm beginning to wonder if he doesn't have a robot brain in his head, you know, (laughs) I think he would like to. I think he would eventually like us all to be there. But we're moving in that direction at, you know, somewhat rapid pace. I mean, they're talking about, um, I I just posted a report, or it's posting tomorrow, um, about a survey on 2,088 people by, I think it was Business Week or something like that, and went through the survey, and it explains how, these 2,088 people that they surveyed thinks that, oh, this is all just fine and it'll be commonplace and, you know, we will have a better human experience because of it. And I was like, ooh, yes. I mean, they're they're talking about downloading consciousness. I did a report called uh, Transcendence. Okay. Uploading brain maps of the dead. What? Yeah. And they're working on that now. And the firm, the the startup, and I think it's in California, that's working on this, they haven't perfected it yet, but they're well on their way. And for the right amount of money, uh, you could be able, at the point of death, upload your brain map to a computer, and then after the death of your physical body, have it downloaded into either a cybernetic unit or another you know or something else oh my god dj i'm just i'm having chills and i'll tell you why is because i absolutely believe we've been doing this for quite some time 
I don't think the more and more I dig into the whole. Now I'm gonna, I know this sounds crazy, but the more I dig into the um, the alien connection to this planet, if there are such things as aliens, I have never seen one or remember one, so I don't know, you know. But everybody I'm around in the UFO community swears to God they're communing with other, you know, entities. Now I don't think as many of them are extraterrestrial entities. I think maybe it's a very small percentage that can transverse the stars. I think the other ones. The more popular of them, like 75 to 80 percent, are probably interdimensional beings. And I believe that these beings have in some way, shape, or form started working with our military on a very dark level where they're actually downloading our consciousness and using our consciousness. Because it explains a lot of what these people that claim they've gone to Mars, these people that claim they've traveled through time, there's people that have claimed they've done all these things, and if you really look at it, what are they saying? They're saying that their consciousness is in a different state or different dimension than our 3D reality here now. And who knows who might be triggering those events to happen in their life as a grand experiment in this country. So, right. I think you're right. And you know, I'll even, um, I'll even support that theory one step further, and it's that I think that what they're doing with this AI or artificial general intelligence, um, and to some degree with CERN, is they're creating a womb, an incubus, for an intelligence that m may have inhabited this planet a very long time ago, and it's not a benevolent intelligence. Oh my God, DJ, I can't believe you said that. That's exactly what I believe too. You I don't know. know how CERN plays into that because I, it, you know, when I was talking earlier about talking to my angels, you know, it, it's, it, I know I sound kind of religious and, and kind of like off the cuff here going into that story, but the reason I brought it up is because who knows that these angels are God or what have you, isn't our higher selves in, in a holographic universe where we're creating everything around us at all times. So basically I'm talking to myself at a higher level or higher dimension. And I think we all can tap into that higher dimension and that is our God. Yeah, so, I, I and, think you're and right. I think there's an equal and opposite, very evil uh, AI system out there that doesn't care about humans at a 3D level very much like the Matrix. They thought we were an anomaly that needed to be killed, you know. So, anyhow, it's a, it's a very bizarre conundrum, and I'm so glad that you're writing about it, thinking about it, digging into it. Now, let me ask you, how did you get involved with, you know, writing about transhumanism and keeping track of all these people out there that are trying to control our, our every thought, deed, and what we're doing here on this planet now? Well, I've always kind of subscribed to the theory and you know I became like you know awake I knew I knew something was very wrong about 10 years ago maybe even more than that but I couldn't put my finger on it so whenever you know um, reports would come out from mainstream what I started doing is flipping them over 180 degrees and going at them from that direction, you know, kind of from the, the perspective, what's up is down, what's good is bad, what's black is white, mm -hmm. and finding some very interesting stuff, you know, as far as what was being reported to us or told to us and compare that to what was actually going on behind the scenes and how very, very good these self-appointed overlords of humanity are at this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Level 9 News came out of a, a, what incident in your life did that, did it spurn it to happen? Well, pretty much the uh, incident where I, um, I uncovered the Jade Helm, what the, the Jade in the Jade Helm exercise was actually a piece of software called Jade 2. And it's a self-aware, network-centric, autonomous warfare system. And it's, it's got tentacles that go out in 100 different directions. But it predominantly uses all of our communications to um, gauge emotional responses to stress, anger, anxiety, conflict. And it weighs those um, emotional responses in a battle planning scenario. 
Oh, geez. So that's kind of what got me into, you know what? I got to put up a website. People need to know about this stuff, what's going on behind the curtain that they're not being told. Oh, and by the way, um, in line with the, the Jade 2 software, yeah. the Pentagon, I just put up a report about this. Um, okay. The Pen Pentagon just released a document. Uh, it's 58 pages, but what it put, what it, what it takes out of the shadows now and puts in the light is everything I've been talking about since way back last year, a year and a half ago. They are telling us we're using your social media. It will be used as targeting mm -hmm. telemetry on a, on an, an autonomous we, um, warfare, seek and destroy, seek and identify type of system. Oh my and they're God. not just talking about terrorists, Lorene. They're talking about all human threats. Oh, That's exactly. Exact quote. In other words, you and me. <laughs> yeah. All human threats pretty much encompasses, encompasses everyone. It does, because humans have emotions, and emotions are not allowed in that kind of scenario. Believe me, I know. Um, oh, my God, this is so crazy. Okay, so the Pentagon, oh, oh, God. You know, this is like talking to, I, you know, I love what you're doing, but every time I talk to you, I kind of freak out for about four days. And it oh. takes me that long to get back to, you know, going to work every day and not having, see, I work at a job where I, I crunch numbers. Uh -huh. And uh, I do a lot of managerial work and things like that. And so I've got a lot of time in my brain while I'm crunching numbers to think about this stuff. Um, I do operate on two levels when I'm crunching numbers. I, I don't know how I do it, but I do. And it just takes me literally days to get back to the point where my mind doesn't wander into these horrible areas wondering what we're going to do to fight back with this. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think there's anything we can do. You know, I've been talking the whole show today. You weren't listening to the first hour, but the whole first hour pretty much was me on a rant about how um, the Occupy movement had it together, but uh, they just didn't have a leadership or a mission. You know, they yeah. didn't know what they were really doing, but man, they were organized. And the problem we've got with a lot of the people out there that are that want to change our government, that want to take back, um, our, you know, our system, uh, they're they're not organized, and they got a lot of passion, but they're just not organized enough, and they and they don't know who who the leader is going to be, and nobody wants to step up. I mean, that's a big problem. We don't have people like George Washington anymore that we could go to and say, look, George, you know, we really need your help. Come on, you know, rally with us, you know. I mean, where do you go? There just isn't anybody, you know. Yeah, I think that movement started out with good intentions, and but it was co-opted. Yes, I agree with you. You know, by Soros and, you know, those of that ilk. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when people go to your website, uh, they can sign up, they can get a subscription to the website, and they can get a username and password, and then you send them every um, day or every couple days a new article via email, um, like an alert? No, I don't do that because I know how much that annoys me. <laughs> 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 but they, but what they get when they sign up or they subscribe is um, they have the ability to comment, and that you know part of that is to keep trolls off the site. They also have the ability to participate in forums that are already up there, and or to create their own forum if they have a topic that they're knowledgeable about and they feel is very important and needs exposure, they can create their own forum oh, on the wonderful. site. That's great. So you're giving people the opportunity to feed each other information in a network situation. Yes. And what I'm trying to do with this site is, you know, a lot of people are doing very good research out there and I applaud them, you know, yourself included. And I wanted to do the same thing, but I also wanted to create a type of a think tank where like-minded people can get together, discuss the problem. All right, I'm laying out the problem. I'm telling you, this is what's happening. This is where this is going. This is Got why it. this won't work the way they're saying it will. And then have other people come in and, you know, in a group think type of a, of a platform, try and address some viable solutions to this. Oh, wonderful. See, now this is, uh, I'm so glad we're talking about this because 
that's what I was ranting about today is that I feel like we don't have any place to find solutions or have solutions. We were, I used Alex Jones as my prime example that he's a great person to wake you up, but after three months you, of listening to him, you haven't realized, A, that he he's in there to make money, and B, he's never going to give you any solution, real solutions to the problem. Then, then you're going to be trapped in that uh, that anger feeding area. Yeah, it, yeah it's anxiety. A, it's a fear mongering, basically, is what it yeah. is. And you'll be trapped with him in that matrix. And I think people are much smarter than that. And I think that if, if after three months you go, oh my God, this guy's never going to help me. Really, he's never going to give you the answers I need. And they should be coming to your site. <laughs> They should. I wish, yeah. they, I wish more of them would. I mean, you know, we're, we're gaining subscribers in that. You know, it's a slow, arduous process. But, you know, because yeah, do you, I, I don't do a lot of promoting and I don't do advertising. You know, you're but like, thanks hey. to people like you, you know, who put the word out there. And, yes, that's what we need to do. We need to have a group think. We can't just all be running around with our hair on fire screaming, you know, this is the problem. This is the problem. And, and nobody, like you pointed out, Nobody contributing anything. Okay, this is what we can do. Or exactly. if that doesn't work, then we can do this. Or yeah. maybe we need to do A, B, and C simultaneously. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, hey, I can't believe it. We've already hit the first break. And I haven't even started talking about the emerging technology article I saw. Oh, my God, folks. We need to hear about this. Okay, we'll be back in a few moments. Stay with us with DJ at Level9News.com. Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. 